I'm just going to record and you can do all the work. I don't think so. It takes more muscles than I expected. Welcome to project number one. I am so excited to rip off this border. It was already coming off a little even. We're going to rip and spray and goof off and scrape. We'll see how this goes. I feel like the wall's popping out. Is the wall gonna pop off? Yes. <laughs> and it's all gonna collapse on you. No. When you're removing the border from an RV, you want to make sure that you have a straight edge whenever you're starting to pull. If you start pulling from the top, it's really hard to get a good angle at it. And when you have a border like this, where the it goes behind your trim, it's really hard to get at. So if you start from the corner here, and you can pull it, it comes clean off. It is slow, but it's a lot better than trying to pull it from the top, which we did on a couple of the sections, and it just takes forever to get pulled down until you get a clean cut to pull back. The second step of taking off the border is getting all the adhesive off the wall. So we are using Goof Off, and we're spraying it, letting it sit for a little while, and then we do a second spray before we scrape, and that seems to be working pretty well. So this area has been sprayed and it's been sitting for a little while. I'm gonna do a second, a second spray. It's also taking off some of the paint color, but that doesn't matter for us because we will just be repainting anyway. Some walls are pretty easy. There's not a lot of adhesive stuck to the wall and it's just a quick spray, a couple scrapes, wipe it down, done. Other walls are just full of adhesive. I'm maybe on round four of spraying and scraping on this one and I've still got some goo. That was easy enough. Just remember, whenever you're removing any of the hardware of something that you're going to keep, all the screws and everything, put them in a baggie for safekeeping so that you know where they are for the next time you need them. And that's the last of the curtains. And it's so much brighter in here with everything down. That's in so much more light since they were covering up probably a good 20% of the windows. We're not keeping it anyway, so... Inside the RV, there's definitely not a lot of space, but there were a total of 27 cabinet doors to take off on the inside here, which counted for 114 screws. It would have gone faster if I did have a drill, but it only took about an hour to get them all off. As we're moving things around inside the RV, as we're prepping to paint the walls and everything, we've discovered a couple issues. Most of them are pretty minor, uh, but Rachel found in one of the corners back here, if you can see it, the wallpaper. 
paper is wrinkled and when we pressed on it there's basically nothing behind it. Uh, the wood that was there to support the wall has essentially rotted away and we checked the storage underneath the bed on the outside and we can see the same thing under there so we're gonna have to do a little bit of investigation to see what can be done and what needs to be done uh, there's not a lot of physical damage on the outside that we can see. Uh, I've been up to the roof and there doesn't seem to be any apparent leaks, but obviously there is something. So we're going to have to take a look and hopefully it's not too, too much to deal with. Time to call it a day. The original plan was to just tackle a few projects here and there as we take some small trips. Um, but as we got to preparing the walls, we realized we might as well also prepare the cabinets. And really, we ought to also take out the dinette and the couch so that we can prepare for the floors. So now we're going for sand everything, prep everything, get the walls, cabinets, and floors done, and then put things back in. So a bigger project, but I think it makes the most sense. This is a long, long cabinet. Goodbye! That's gonna be a stinky paint job in there. So we've taken out one of the benches here from the dinette and working on the second one, got all of the screws out except this is still attached. So I've pried off this back panel here and it'll be impossible for you to see. But there are two screws in there which are screwed in from the outside of the RV and I have no clue how we're going to get those out. So I'm probably going to have to just rip it out and hope for the best. And there they are, the two screws holding the bench to the wall. I want to know whose bright idea it was to screw those in from the outside of the RV. We're free. Sweaty. Right behind me is one of our water damage areas in the RV. We ripped up the couch and the dinette and the carpet underneath them. And the previous owner had actually repaired some of the water damage. They pulled out this panel here, replaced it with another panel and the floor as well. But they didn't seal it up properly. Um, so it's starting to leak again. Uh, this was is a little bit damp since it did rain the other day. Um, but it, the board itself isn't rotted through, so as long as we seal it up on the outside, we should be fine. But we are going to have to tear this out. Hopefully, be able to cut it right along here, replace the bottom panel uh, with a new one, and just to make sure that we don't have any mold or anything like that inside the walls. as we're removing paneling on the slide out to get to the water damage and get everything replaced we found more water damage as it turns out one of the knobs for the window on the slide out was cracked on the inside so the window wasn't closing all the way causing water to come in and as you'd expect that caused more water damage within the wall 
So we're removing that and hopefully that's gonna be solving it for this slide out. We still have the water damage in the bedroom to take care of and hopefully maybe solve that next week. Our water damage repair is coming along quite nicely. We had to rip out a little bit more of the panel on the slide. We discovered a leak, uh, as I mentioned, underneath the window since it wasn't sealing up properly because this knob was broken, as you can see. And had to replace some of the panels. Uh, the bottom board had to come out since it was completely rotted. But we've got a two by four in there now, cut it down to size, had to cut these studs make them a little bit shorter so that the 2x4 could fit. Now I just have to put some braces in and finish it all up. So we have Fix the water damage, hopefully, fingers crossed. Added in some new wood, new insulation, cut out panels for the mess that we made. And now it's time to staple it to the wall and hope it fits perfectly. finished off our water damage repair and we've got new panels on the walls which also means we can finally paint I think the goal on Sunday was to be prepped for painting on Monday today is Thursday and we should be prepped and start painting for Friday so a little behind schedule but it was worth it to fix up those water damage spots so that we can